Whatever you want. Okay, here's the first tower, and we're going to turn it on. And uh, it's got the new, the new kind of uh, drivers. And in fact, this driver is the solid one that's made by one company in Texas called Stormwise.com. Uh, uh, that makes them an inch thick. That's like the for people who can't tear down TV sets and uh, things. So you know, I'm going to turn on a second one here to accelerate it faster. And here uh, it's going to, uh, through the three phase, three three phasers, two. Uh, four giant uh, capacitors down here, and here's the readout. You can see it going up two, two point three, two point four, two point five as it spins faster and faster. Okay, so uh, here's what the package looks like. That comes from Stormwise, so that you see these are called slugs, two-inch slugs, and this is half a slug on the other side there. And I don't see any advantage over the homemade kind from the TV sets and monitors. But, uh, you know, as I say, it's a lot less work to order it if you want to. <coughs> but you see, if we put in nine of these, this is on a CD-ROM, right? Which is uh, making resistance, which is cutting down on our power and our RPMs. You see, but if we put nine, it's going to weigh much more. So I am, I ordered non-magnetic bearings, and the non-magnetic bearings allow you to use a ring magnet at the base of the whole thing, and then use a ring of magnets above it that elevate and lift the whole column. And why that's good, besides increasing the power, is that I read this book by Stephen King, and when he comes back out of time of saving Kennedy by shooting Oswald and a bunch of other stuff, he sees cars, one of them called the <laughs> Ford Breeze, that have spinners on the top, like air turbines on the top. But everybody's got radiation poisoning, it's a horrible world. So, you know, I suddenly realized, hey, when I twist this thing on top, I never thought of putting a spinner on the top. But if I put a spinner on the top, it overcomes the initial uh, inertia, and so you use a lot less electronic energy, right? <coughs> so, you know, uh, you can dial your levitation. You can use 2% uh, levitation or 5%, so this increases the specs of the uh, glass ball bearing, uh, plastic and glass ball bearing. So you could freeze frame this if you want to examine this, but the idea is that inversion currents from the dark ground and whatnot will keep it spinning all the time so that you escape from the vagaries of weather, the vagaries that are, you know, in solar energy with, uh, you know, day and night and wind and, and the rest of it. Okay, the other invention we need. This is how to make uh, a chemical uh, super uh, polymer, a paramagnetic polymer uh, solid state uh, uh, thing, much, much larger out of plastic. Okay? You start at the top with uh, ferrous oxide, you put it down through a colander into a, a hydrocarbonate uh, a mesh of a couple of MAUs. Uh, uh, you rotate it so they won't get blocked. You have an N plus NH2 env uh, environment uh, gas below it. So it makes an exchange reaction of the oxygen, which likes hydrogens, to become water. And uh, you've got some cotton wadding that soaks up the water that releases, and the nitrogens uh, replace the oxygens. So then it keeps going. It's now a spaghetti going through carbon nanotubes into the next phase where you have a hydrogen atmosphere but you have the carbon uh, disintegrating 
Uh, so you have carbon powder floating in the hydrogen atmosphere, and so you have a hydrocarbon uh, that you uh, put a, an electric guy pulsing a transition, a hydrogen transition, uh, P to S, uh, wavelengths, frequencies, uh, that give you the cross-linking. And as it's extruded out the bottom, uh, you know, you get six or eight inches thick, which makes very much more powerful drive things. We've got uh, practically the most powerful ones right here, right? So we're up to a 4.2 here. I haven't been paying attention to it. I can make it go higher than that for sure. Let's see if I want to increase my voltage a little bit. There, I increased the voltage. That should make a, I should increase the voltage on the other one too. You can hear it sort of scraping the side. You know, I've had a lot of trouble with my body English, like uh, making everything perfectly symmetrical and so on and so forth, right? Anyway, I wanted to show you that and show you how it's going to uh, thing. I've even got a sketch here. This is just a sketch of the Nixie uh, with the uh, spinners on the top. And uh, the spinners may even be able to replace, as the frontal wind pressure builds up, the electronics. Maybe you can uh, close the whole system down uh, after a certain speed on the highway or so, you know? We don't know yet. Nobody's built this yet, <laughs> as far as I know. Nissan and the Chinese may have built it, you know, in their secret laboratories, or they maybe not even secret, just... Uh, speaking another language and uh, having their own uh, YouTube, that kind of thing, right? Now, where's my little... There, I increased the voltage there, too. So these are all in parallel. Oh, that's right. You see, slant them more. The more you slant them, the faster it goes. Anyway, it's been stuck for a while at 420, 470, 480. You know, I had it up to 5 uh, with the first run. This is the second run only. But you can see the idea. And you can see if you cut down the friction, and the weight, you know, you're going to get a lot higher results than if you add layers, of course, you know. <clears throat> and more windings and, you know, so on and so forth. And maybe have the cores at the end. But these cores will do, <coughs> even if you have to have three cores or something and so on. So that sketch is good, you know. Okay, I'm going to shut it down. And uh, thank you for watching. So these are a couple of sketches I made in 89 and published of a visit uh, I was taken to by some alien uh, uh, people who actually told me that I was uh, Arctur they were from Arcturus star system and I was an Arcturian hybrid. And that's how, you know, I, I, they, they were interested in me and I tuned in on them. And I tried to picture their energy fields because it was very hard to see their bodies. And it was very scary. But I had taken a lot of acid and a lot of DMT and peyote and whatnot. So I was able to actually penetrate. Actually, I'd seen humanoids too, and they're very, uh, but they're, you know, it's hard to see a humanoid. You've got to be disciplined like yoga and stuff. And uh, they showed me how the propulsion systems worked and everything and the guidance systems. And actually, this car, the Nixie that I showed, is a mass teaching device for interstellar guidance systems. It's hard for people to, to, to think, but this super paramagnetic material that we're using here to make the car go is also in your brains. You know, and in birds' brains, and it's being used to, by birds in their migratory things. And the aliens were using this. 
to guide them, them advanced accelerations and velocities to uh, other star systems or wormholes or whatever you get into or suspended animations or time dilations, whatever, you know. And uh, the thing is that as you go along in the Nixie, I said, you know, that the gyroscopic effect of the magnetic fields makes it harder to steer. But the highway code is that the faster you go, the less you have to turn when they build the roads. So as long as you're within those parameters, you're okay. But the point is that you begin, you begin to link thinking the curve with the motion of the hand a half an inch or something on the halter making the curve, the physical part and the mental part. So you prepare yourself for this kind of situation where they all stood here, they, they're all standing around and taking off. This is uh, the vehicle's in motion. Here it's settled down or something like a living room and I showed these kind of weird places. They had these lights in the wall and I, I did LED work after, before and after this, you know, so I assumed they were some type, kind of electronic lights and the electronic lights seemed to give them like a balance thing about how they were doing with the, with the thing. And these food dispensers, and they didn't have beds. They seemed to have like just have these retractable couches with uh, various controls in the arms, which uh, I did a very lousy, sketchy effort there. And they seemed to have some foliage, you know, and stuff, so, you know. And uh, I tried to do something like their structural members. This, is, again, isn't particularly accurate, and I don't know what material. I think it was, it was like a plastic, metallic sheen plastic of some sort. But I didn't do any uh, real... Yeah, I, I was most interested in this sort of crystal in the middle. You know, it seemed to be like uh, balanced. Uh, by their guidance thing, like like just like the Nixie going down the road, you know, being balanced by the magnetic fields, uh, uh, magnet their magnet magnetite uh, stacks in their minds, able to influence it a slight degree or something, you know, and by six of them, you know, the whole crew concentrating on it, be able to like move it, you know, to various places where it was connected to something that uh, maneuvered the. So this technology is beyond us, but I try and explain to people that this is probably alien reverse technology. And they don't understand what I mean. And I say, hey, I wake up in the morning and I have these ideas, I have these plans, I have solutions to problems. Where did I get them? Where did the, where do these things come from? Oh, well, they tell us, oh, it comes from yourself or it comes from God. And some say, well, maybe have an angel or a pixie told you, you know, or something. You know, uh, it seems to me that maybe God wouldn't have time and that there's a bunch of other beings that have emanation fields, you know, and are in touch with us. And uh, so the aliens are actually giving us their technology or trying to if we only listen. So this is my attempt at listening to solve the major problems of Earth right now, you know. Uh, to get into the 21st century, because the 20th century was a century of exploitation and entropy, and we're not really in the 21st century yet. This is when the Chinese and Japanese start making these self-propelled vehicles that don't use fuel and don't need batteries. You know, what's his name? It came out with a self-generating um, car, a self-charging car called the uh, Gitano. Alviso is his name in the Philippines, the uh, Gitano 111. Uh, and I want to tell him you could throw out 18 of those 20 batteries, you know, if you use this method, you know, because it's about a ton and it costs thousands of dollars and they're going to wear out. But of course, you have to get rid of the crummy uh, fuel body too and build a much lighter frame and so on and so forth, something like the Nixie. So, that's, uh, that's my message. It's coming, and uh, the, the, the mass media is trying to tell you it'll take a century. And uh, Fulford and um, the rest of us and me, I'm telling you, it's here now. And you can build it. You can participate. And, uh, you know, that's it. That's it. We've got to, we've got to actually struggle to, uh, to achieve prosperity and peace on Earth because the old ways aren't working. 
and they don't want to, the old men don't want to change.